Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of How to Harad for the Fourth Age Total War Dominion of Men. We are walking through a campaign as the Empire of Harad and I would say that at this point, at the date of Fourth Age 392, we are pretty solidly in the middle campaign it feels like. Now I know that we haven't gone all that many turns in. Uh, in terms of how long we've been playing, maybe something like, uh, what is it, 356 when it starts? So, I don't know, 80 turns or so. Uh, but yeah, around the middle game is where this feels like. Now, just to review, we've basically locked down the south. We've got uh, Harondor under our thumb as a protectorate. They're basically just guarding our, guarding our northern border against any of these Dunedanic factions that might want to be a problem. We've been trying to lock down the coast, although lately the reunited kingdom has been rearing its head and sending out naval fleets against us, but we've been able to manage it and prevent them from landing any forces on our territory. And way out into the east, uh, we have locked down both Far Harad as a protectorate over here and Khand, surprisingly enough. So we have all of this territory uh, that counts as ours in a sense, uh, and these factions still survive, they still send us money, and importantly, particularly Khand, is acting as something of a keystone, a buffer between us and Rune and any of the other factions to the north. So basically all of this is very well locked down. If we can look at the diplomacy, just to double check our, uh, our protectorates, do not have any uh, unfortunate allies that could cause a problem, and Far Harad is only allied to us. Harondor does have an alliance with Tharbad and with the Kingdom of Ravanian. That may be something we want to watch out. But both of those factions are pretty far from us at the moment, and barring an extremely unlikely, like, naval action on the part of Tharbad, I think we can, for the most part, ignore this. And in terms of Khand, they do have an alliance with North Rune and with the Chieftain of Rune. Neither of these are really threats to us because, again, we don't border those factions. Now, in terms of our overall faction goals, we are counting as, uh, as possessing currently 29 provinces. Now, several of those are actually in the hands of our protectorates. I think that would be a total of six or seven uh, because I think Khand owns three, Far Harad two, and Harad two. So we actually only have something like 22 settlements of our own. Um, and unfortunately, this number will not be counted by the game engine when it tries to tally whether or not we've won. We're going to actually have to own ourselves 45 provinces. I think we're just going to ignore that, though, and claim this as like sort of the moral victory. If this number gets to 45, then we'll say that we've won, pretty much. The other things we will need to do, though, in addition to getting to a total of 45 provinces, is holding all of these particular settlements. The ones that we don't own currently are all in Gondor, and I think it may be time to start thinking about that. We've got Minas Anor, the capital, Dol Amroth, a very important settlement in the fiefs, uh, Lin here and Pilargir, both important settlements on the coast. And these are right along the coastline here from Dol Amroth in the west, all the way up towards the Anduin. Now, I am observing here that we still have a Dunabar in possession of South Athelion, uh, but they are under siege, most likely by the reunited kingdom. If we double-click the settlement, we can see what the garrison is, even without getting a spy in there, uh, and it's at less than half strength. There's no telling exactly how large the attacking army is, but we know that reunited kingdom has taken North Athelion, and they've well, they haven't done much more than that, actually. They've taken back Ker Andros. Uh, Adunabar has lost Anorian to Rohan. Uh, but it doesn't... I can't tell if anyone owns um, the province up here along the Emin Muwil. It starts off in the hands of Adunabar, but I'm not sure if they still hold it. Regardless, the United Kingdom is being very slow to make progress into Mordor, although they could potentially be conquering into this territory. But I'm happy to let this uh, fall, basically, before we start any northern march. Uh, and that is how we are going to accomplish this, because there's one unit that we haven't used yet, and that would be the Mumikil. Now, we have used Mumikil in some limited capacity at the very beginning of the campaign. You get a couple of units for free, but we're working on building our own Mumikil training grounds. We've got three seasons left, and then we will be able to train 
our very own Mumikill units, as many as we want, and we can even retrain the one that we've got off somewhere in the east at the moment. The reason we haven't been using Mumikill against Rohan is because those were naval operations and you can't get the elephants on the boats. So we've not been using them in the north, but I would love to bring them up into Gondor. So we're going to wait for that to finish. And in the meantime, we're also going to see what we can do about Rohan. Uh, because in the last episode, of course, we took the Hornburg, a very significant take for us. Uh, Rohan still holds the Eisen March, which they grabbed back from us, but I'm content to let them hold on to that for the moment. But I do see a potential opportunity here. Over the settlement of Entwade, we've got the settlement itself, plus an army standing at the ford. That might be something that we could, uh, could attack here. So let's get our army over and see if we have the movement points to attack this force. And we just don't. Very unfortunate. Maybe in the next season, though, we'll be able to attack this army, or maybe we'll be attacked. Now, in terms of developing the Hornburg itself, I've decided that we are not going to go military. Uh, that's because at the very highest possible level of military development, this is what we get. Um, we are still in the native recruitment phase. We've not converted to the cult. So that means we're basically going to get a couple of units of local levies. And then at, at tier four, the highest we can go, we're going to get the first couple levels of our own units. We're going to get footmen of Harad, plainsmen skirmishers, neither of which are terribly exciting. We also will get swords of Harad, which are better, and Haradwaith riders, which are kind of meh. The fact, though, that we can get uh, cavalry at tier two without any military development means that I'm much less inclined to go this route, and instead we will exploit the natural uh, finance opportunities at the Hornburg. We've got uh, gems here. I believe we've also got silver. Uh, so there is a lot of money to be made here, especially if we can conquer those adjacent settlements. And I think those two adjacent settlements are going to be Entwade and Edoras. I was hemming and hawing a little bit in the last episode about whether I'd go too far to the east uh, with regards to pursuing my war with Rohan. I think we have to, though. I think we have to make the attempt, keep up our momentum at the moment, because otherwise we'll just be perpetually under siege here as Rohan starts to attempt to throw together armies to take it back. So we'll take this force here. The reason I'm not taking the governor or the general is that after this last battle, he is, um, well, he's not doing so hot. His men are rationing. Uh, and so that means that he's going to have to spend a turn or so in the settlement to get back supplies. So we'll send this army, which is relatively fresh, with a couple of more spearmen. We'll set them right over here outside Edoras. Inside the settlement, we have a family member. We also have lots of cav, some of which are pretty high tier. But I think with all these archers and spearmen, we stand a pretty okay chance of uh, surviving a counterattack. We do have a couple of field armies who may try to attack us. So we'll just see what they do. Otherwise, we'll do our usual build some token rams and we'll see what the AI does. And that didn't take long. We have a relatively small army uh, deciding that they want to protect Edoras, which makes a lot of sense. Let's see what's in this. Okay, this is a pretty strong force. We got uh, some Riders of the Mark, Shields of the Mark, Rittermark Spears, and Guards of the King's House, a strong infantry unit. So we'll see how we do. The balance of power says this will be about even. All right, because this is something of a bridge battle or a crossing battle, we can be a little defensive here, but the problem is we're getting reinforcements uh, for the enemy from right behind us. So we do need to make sure that this ends pretty quickly. It looks, though, like the AI is going to bring forth its uh, forces. They're not going to waste a lot of time. We're already shooting at them. And uh, again, they have some good units, uh, but so do we, I think, particularly in the ranged and spear department. So I've got my skirmishers up front, archers in the back and to the flanks, and then we've got our line of spears back here. We've got some palace guard, but there's not too many of them. They're at least providing a bit of a morale boost, which is very helpful in an army that has no uh, general leading it. So these mercenary swording skirmishers are going to get out of the way. They're going to get into the way, rather. That'll be just fine, I guess. They can, sure, route in that direction. I guess we'll do that. We'll rush our spears forward then. I don't know where these guys think they're going. Uh, rivers confuse the AI, apparently, so what we're going to do is just halt them there, take them off skirmish. They can still hit some of these units. That'll be just fine. And we can see we're already routing some of the enemy. These guards of the king's house, though, yeah, I mean, they're going to they're gonna do pretty good. And if these guys can rush us, 
uh, that would be, of course, a disaster. Now, it doesn't look like the AI has thrown its cavalry in, unfortunately. Um, but, on the other hand, we are shooting them quite a bit. These Riders of the Mark charging in against our Swerting Skirmishers. Let's see if we can sort that out. Um, yeah, you know what? You guys go right off Skirmish. You guys, too. Just everybody chill out. And uh, send the Javelins right at the Riders of the Mark unit. They don't have a general, either. That's the nice thing about this. All right, get our spearmen around here. It looks like their cav is basically obliterated. Okay, our Riddermark spears are actually hitting our skirmishers. That's that's not obliterated. But we do have some cav of our own. We can get them in the flanks. Those Riddermark spears are winning. Of course, this is skirmishers and archers and stuff. These Riders of the Mark are losing. I don't like my odds, though, all of a sudden looking at that in the back. That is, uh, that is not good. My one hope here is, okay, now that we've uh, got these guys on the run... Guards of the King's House routing, which is very good. We're going to ignore that, and everybody, absolutely everybody, get off skirmish and run across to the other side here. We're going to try to hold the other side of the river. We're also going to try to take care of these Riders of the Mark. Just a couple men left. There they go. And again, ignore them all. Get across the stream, ignore all of these guys. There's 13, they're broken, they're not going to come back, I don't think. Good news is, we still have a lot of men, uh, or a lot of arrows, rather. We've got a ton of arrows in our quivers, so we'll get these guys uh, right back where they need to be. We do not have that many javelins for our skirmishers, unfortunately. So I think maybe what we'll do here is we'll use the spears a little more proactively than we did in the last one. Uh, they'll just go back here in a more traditional sort of format. I think the cavalry still wants to be back. These skirmishers can be just extra fear units. And uh, since they have spears as a secondary or melee weapon, they can still be useful to prevent, uh, you know, cavalry taking advantage of things. All right, good. That's just the Rittermark Bowman. So when the AI has archers, you're going to see them typically use those as they set up in a column formation before crossing the, the ford or the bridge. And that's what they're doing here. You can see once the archers are gone, they don't waste any time. They just go straight across. So we'll get our spears up ready to flank. I'm thinking I want to keep these palace guard basically a little back from the fray. And they are not going to get a charge. They are throwing spears at me. But we just have so many more missiles uh, to chuck at their general direction. This unit here, though, Riders of the King's House, terrifying unit. Uh, so let's go ahead and put these guys on guard mode. A formation I always forget to use. We'll just kind of casually walk those spears in the direction of the fray. And uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll use these swordings to, like, try to do some damage. Okay, so far so good. Riders of the Mark wavering, that's very nice. Okay, that was just Shields of the Mark, but it's good to get rid of those infantry units. And it looks like the AI General does not know what to do. Very, very hesitant. There go the Riders of the Mark. Lovely. All right, there's still quite a lot there. Oh, okay, that's that's not it. Uh, all right, but we're doing all right. We're, we've got the Riders of the King's House, 17 men left. We've got uh, 16 Rohan Riders. Let's pull our Swordings back. Looks like some of our Corsair archers are out of ammo. They've got their swords pulled. But it's going to be basically just these, uh, just this AI general unit. All right, he can go back and forth. Let's speed it up, see if he chooses a different tactic. Okay, there we go. He's getting stuck on spears. Take him out of guard mode now, and there we go. We are going to continue this. Because we absolutely want to get the general killed but it, it looks like he's going to get away they use the AI speed moves so that means we're not going to get the city um, because he was the captain of the garrison 
Well, that's not the end of the world, actually. All right, so they didn't have the option to bring anyone else to attack us. So that means we could just go ahead and uh, assault and deal with this. We could do it on the auto calc, although they would have these couple of units to reinforce. Let's take a moment, though, and check out our news here. All right, so this is something you don't often see, actually, the Bjornings versus the Kingdom of Tharbad, or at least not until later in the campaign. So what must have happened is that Tharbad has conquered all of the north, or at least enough of it to get close to the High Pass, and then the Bjornings need to get the High Pass uh, stronghold as part of their victory conditions, and then sometimes keep heading west. So that's very interesting to observe. It won't affect us, uh, at least for a very long time. We've got a couple of scouts that we've trained in Harn, Gond, and in the Hornburg, and I believe we... Okay, so he's just going to be there, and uh, one of the nice things about getting territory in Rohan is you do get some interesting ancillaries every now and then, so a swift steed. Very nice. We may keep him in the Hornburg just for now. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and train another one, and we'll bring this guy out, and uh, and I think I want to send him over over into the Wold. We'll see what we can find over here. This is probably going to be the, uh, the center for Rohan's production, and it does look like they've gotten over the Anduin, so they are in possession of the Emin Mawil. Interesting. So I'd like to see how far they've gotten into the Rovanian region, uh, if at all. So that may open up what we may want or feel like we need to conquer. We may need to get over to the Great River itself. Not really anything wrong with that, actually. Elsewhere, we've got a coming of age, Surur of the House of the Black Sails. This is all the way down in Akarn. Very nice. Uh, this is, you know, basically our easternmost stronghold. We don't really need the people here, and he's not that good, but maybe he'll learn under the tutelage of his father. And uh, I guess it's just another body to throw around if we need one. Uh, we've also got an attuned governor trait uh, in Karenbad. Very nice. So he's taking over for the old emperor. Uh, and he's competent, so that's just fine. We'll keep him in that position. And then our spy got a swift steed ancillary. In terms of finances, we got almost 20, we got 19,000 uh, in tribute in the last season between our three protectorates, so not a bad haul. Uh, and we made 39 grand. I'm trying to spend money uh, a little bit more, uh, but for the most part, I'm focusing on those settlements where I have governors. That's where I'm going to be getting the discounts. Although you could argue that at this point in the game with my treasury, I don't really need to be so worried about the discounts uh, exactly. So let's go for just a few more purchases in some of these other settlements that don't have anybody. And, uh, you know, 12,000, that's not bad uh, in terms of a return on investment. So it's a usually a, a pretty good purchase. Um, although I would typically wait for a suitable governor to start building that stuff. Elsewhere, though, I've started some typically lower priority uh, policies or constructions in some of these homeland settlements, the um, the execution square, both in Umbar City and in Karas Nan. And the reason for that, if we check out the settlement detail scroll, is we're starting to see some mismanagement creep in as a result of us moving our capital around. Now, that's something you definitely have to do as you expand. Uh, you want to keep that center of power in a reasonable place. But as a result, Settlements that you normally wouldn't dream of putting like a law building in because they just aren't needed, uh, that really changes things up. So you do have to keep an eye on your mismanagement. And this is going to uh, cut, let's see, about 300, uh, but it's only going to cost us, you know, 100. So net, it's a gain. Well, back to Rohan. Over in Entwade, uh, we do not any longer have a loose army that we can use. To, uh, to put it under siege. So I guess what we could do is just go ahead and put this under siege and deal with a counterattack that is certain to come. Um, I wonder if... No, because they can, they can move through their zone of control. So there's no point in us moving over like a tile. These armies would still be able to reach us. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and... Um, well, no. Let's march on to the Ford. And then we'll do this. We'll be able to use the, uh, the crossing against us just like we did in the last battle. And for this one, I think we're going to see what the balance of power says here. If we go to Assault, okay, that's pretty good odds. I'm tempted to auto-resolve here. We may lose, you know, a bunch of units that we wouldn't otherwise. But, yeah, ugh, so 300 men. Well, we're going to lose units fighting Rohan. So, here we have Eterus. Now, this is a chief settlement. Very important, of course, for Rohan's production. I think we needed to get rid of that settlement. Uh, soon. So we'll lay desolate 
And uh, now we're getting into some trouble with with public order here. So we may want to slow things down a bit. And I know we just put end weight under siege. Um, we don't really have too many uh, policies to build or in terms of provincial pacification. The only one we're working on now is the Hornburg itself. So maybe we need to think about moving our capital yet again. I think it's currently sitting at, uh, where was it? All right, we can find it this way. Uh, right mouse button. It's Ur. Okay. And I think we've done a pretty good job over here. So public order is looking, looking pretty nice. Let's see. Our finances now are slated to make uh, 21,000. Let's move it up to Harngond. All right, that's, that's a little bit of a loss. Public order still looks fine everywhere down here. Have we made a difference in the north, though? That is the question. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we only lost um, about a grand overall in terms of our income. So this is very, very good news. Now, the other thing we want to do is, is start to get some comings of age, some other generals up here. We've got uh, Obiojulu of Lokond, and then we've got uh, Moonhir the Hunter, who took over the Hornburg. Uh, he is middle-aged, but dutiful, which is very nice. And this guy is probably also in his middle age. Now he's mature, a little younger. So we just have to hope both of these guys live. And uh, as we get them, some extra governors would be really useful to have up here. So we're going to hold off on Homeland Dominion. We're not going to destroy this. But definitely earn some money back with the King's Feasts and the Royal Barracks. Yes, indeed. Great Market and the Healer are going to be very useful. Uh, we cannot destroy the Barrow Field, unfortunately. This is this is sort of a fixed building, a hinterland building, is how it's coded. Uh, so we can't uh, we can't destroy that as much as you would like to, as Harad, I guess. Uh, we'll keep all of this other stuff, the Hall of Songs and the Horse Farms. Although actually, Horsemaster Stables, this is a uh, specialization building for Rohan, and we don't need it, so we can get rid of that. And that leaves uh, pretty much everything. So I think what we will do. As strange as it seems to say, is uh, we will rebuild Medjusel, and then we'll restore the timber wall just to ensure that we can hold off any other invasions. Now, from this direction, we're going to have uh, two settlements of Rohan. So let's um, let's get another spy out here. Let's see. We'll bring this guy down south to see what we've got. We've got Aldeburg there. I'm not seeing any other forces. We've got Kalinhad right there. And that's it. So let's um, let's bring this down and let's double check. It says when you mouse over the city that this is still in the hands of the Kingdom of Adunabar and that they're allies. That's probably the case. So yes, um, Adunabar is held out. Minus Honor still has half a stack. And then Arnen has a little less. And Minus Ithil has almost nobody. So of course, we'll get a man down into Ithilien just to see what the actual disposition of forces looks like in the region so we can better plan for when we expand up north. Okay, and this is a very fortunate attack. So Rohan has decided to sally, but they do not have the movement points to get this giant army over to us, which I am extremely thankful for. So all we're facing here is uh, is the garrison of the city. Geralt of the Entwash Vale and his levies and so on. This is going to be an extremely straightforward battle. I think I'm going to go ahead and fight this just off camera. There's nothing too exciting. We've got, you know, a lot of archers, a lot of horse archers, uh, and, and I think we're just going to ultimately brute force our way into this. Of course, if it looks like it's going to take a turn, then I'll show you. Okay, yeah, so a pretty straightforward fight. The one thing I'm worried about here is how this, uh, this battle is going to go, because as always, we do have to worry about these riders of the king's house. We've basically seen off the enemy infantry, uh, but now we've got these pretty, pretty serious riders are charging in on our swordsmen and probably going to do a ton of damage. It's very upsetting. But let's bring our archers, who are also spearmen, around and we'll surround them with our uh, our cataphracts from Khand and there he goes it looks like he was taken out by a spear from the Parchereb tribesmen very very good stuff so we'll bring all of our cavalry up here we want to just make those um, archers rout and we've got this if these guys don't come back to the fight then we'll just take over the city archers are wavering there we go. We're going to end it here, and we're going to get back to the campaign map with Entwade under our belts. Yes, indeed. Captured settlement Entwade. So, um, you know, again, maybe this was a bit hasty because we just talked about how we're running into public order problems. We can lay desolate, and then we've got a big army outside. 
so yeah, we may this may be a situation uh, in which we use some clever diplomacy to make life a little bit easier for us. Let's first decide on this husband here. He's youthful, he's energetic and charismatic. Um, and he's poor, which isn't the worst. He's not intelligent, but you know what? Let's take him. Oh, he's at the Hornburg. Is that true? Oh, let's get rid of the, the overlay here. Is he at the Hornburg? Oh, awesome. That is so great. Excellent news. We've got a new young general up here, or potentially governor, but I'm thinking I'm leaning towards general. So we've got a lot of news to go through here. Marriage celebrations, yes, a very happy day. Uh, we've got yet another scout at the Hornburg. And we've done a bunch of building, as you can see, and rebuilding, as it were. Our other kingdom announcements are just lordships and a master silversmith from Nabalung of Harlorn, and he's down at Umbar City. So t plus 20% trade income. That is, that's pretty big. So let's look at how much trade we're making. 5,468. And that's with the 20% for the master silversmith. So I don't know what 20% of this would be. But it's, uh, you know, it's it's a good amount, I'm going to say. So would it be like a thousand? Yeah, one fifth. So basically, that just makes over a thousand extra trade income. Very, very nice. Uh, so what else do we have for news? I think that's it for those announcements. We're the largest kingdom. Of course we are. About time we got recognized for that. Last report, we made almost 15 grand or so. And uh, then Antwade is now terrified of us. As well they should be. Now, they do have some forces in the region. We can kind of get a sense. It looks like this is a lower tier army. I want to keep this, this scout, though, moving into the east. Because I do want to keep an eye on the region here. I can just tell by the border of the, of, of the land here that the Bjornings do still own this region, the Greenwood Vales up the river. So that's, that's very nice. That means Rohan is not going in that direction. Um, but yeah, Rohan has taken mid-deeping. They now own the brown lands. We'll keep this guy moving, uh, moving east. I, I don't think that they uh, are doing anything against Rovanian. In fact, they're allies with Rovanian. So that means that Rohan has probably not done much beyond this. Maybe, maybe there's a chance they went up here and took uh, this settlement from the rebels in the, uh, the east bite. But beyond that... Uh, unless they're fighting Dale or something, which which they aren't, uh, then that's about that. So, Antwade. We could actually keep this um, with in terms of public order. The real question is, can we hold it against this army? And, um, and I'm thinking no. Okay, we trained another scout over here. I guess I meant to train them over here, so let's, let's do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and we can get this scout to take a closer look at these Rohirrim forces. Yeah, so nothing too bad. It looks like they've got their last unit of helming us, who is off east somewhere while we took uh, the Hornburg. He was not around to defend his homeland. Uh, and otherwise, they've got a single unit of Riders of the Mark, a single unit of Shields of the Mark. This may be their last big elite army, um, or their last big army with some elite units, because as you can see, most of it is fairly weak stuff. Now, that said, we do not have a very good army either, but if we're defending a settlement like the Entwade, we might be okay. So I think what we'll do, and this makes a uh, probably a, a decent spot for us to stop the episode, folks. We've expanded pretty dramatically, I would say here, uh, into Rohan, where we now own basically the good part. I would like to take Aldberg because it would just give one more place for Edoras to trade with. And also the hold of Dunharrow is an easy grab. It counts as a settlement towards our victory conditions, but without all the troublesome uh, you know, public order difficulties of a large crowded settlement itself. So we can grab these two and then we'll be making a lot of money. You can see the trade we're already making uh, between, uh, between Edoras and the Hornburg. So that's just going to increase. If we can uh, get Aldberg as well, that's a nice defensible settlement and gets us that much closer towards Gondor. Now, I know I said that we were going to go after Gondor in this episode, but I think what you want to do when you're doing something a little ridiculous, like setting up a colony far from your homelands, is really do some due diligence and make sure you're going to be able to hold that thing. So I think the next move here is going to be moving units from the Hornburg over to these regions and defending, particularly against this large force. 
uh, and then seeing how the campaign progresses from there. So thank you very much for joining me in this episode of How to Harad. Harad. I hope you'll stick around for the next one. Until then, everybody, take care.